When I started filming the spies, we just had a video camera, and that was the very start of video cameras. HD cams had just come in. So what's been wonderful as we've gone through different subjects, all the time new cameras are coming onto the market and they're getting smaller and they're getting easier to adapt and use in no end of devices. So now with the recent spy creatures we can actually have cameras in their eyes and we're continually developing, working with existing equipment but we also do a lot of modification, you know, stripping them down and making them smaller so we can get cameras where we would in the past only dream of having cameras. When we made Earth Flight, you know, we were holding back on her, so having the camera on the back of the bird until the technology became so good we could have that viewpoint shot in HD in high quality. And there was a point when we had the technology but the cameras weren't small enough, so we then made them smaller and smaller and smaller you know, by stripping them down and, and, and converting them into the, the camera that we wanted. But by the end of Earth Flight, you know, the GoPros had come on the market, they'd done our job for us, and those are readily available, you know, to, to consumers. And that's, I think, an exciting development in wildlife filming. There is this levelling out of the playing field um, between, um, you know, the professionals and the amateurs, where it's now about the vision. There's so much technology of high quality available and I think that's an exciting development in the whole area and that things that we could only dream of or were hugely expensive to make are now in the reach of the consumer. The battle now is that, you know, as a filmmaker, you have to make something, you know, better than what the average person can make because what's your role? Where we put our effort is into the invention um, you know, of the, the spy creatures, of the viewpoint, but most importantly, the imagery and the telling of the story. And that's, you know, what programme making should be about. So often we approach a, a subject and you think, how are we going to do that? I had that moment when we decided to make a film on tigers. Up until we'd made that, f what ended up being a three-part film on tigers. You know, if you've got 10 minutes of tiger behaviour within an hour-long film, you're doing well. and. You know, we wanted to get our cameras close to them. We wanted the whole spice perspective. And it was only going out, sitting on the elephants, trying to find the tigers, um, and ultimately finding the tigers, that the solution became apparent, and that was that the elephants would carry the cameras, and the elephants would act like a steady cam and do a lot of the filming. But we had devices that they could also put down close to the tigers, and we could control that, those devices and get, you know, in your face pictures of tigers, but tigers behaving naturally. And over the course of what was going to be a one-part film, it became a three-part film telling the story of little baby cubs growing up to be adult tigers. We told that whole story and the end result was wall-to-wall -wall tiger footage and tiger behaviour from beginning to end. I mean, it was at the beginning the hardest thing we'd ever attempted. But every time you do a new project, you're almost faced with that. We had that with polar bears, you know, always on the move. You know, it's, it's incredible ar Arctic ice sheet, and you can, how can you find them? How can you get your cameras next to them? But each time we devise new spy cameras and sp new ways of filming, it's all about starting to understand the behavior. In the end, the footage starts to grow, and suddenly you have this amazing story which the animal is telling you. Whenever we're doing anything, whether it's a spy camera, or our you know, larger cameras, we always shoot at the quality level dictated by the size. And so you know, on our bigger cameras, you know, we're shooting 5K as, as standard at the moment. Dolphins was a very difficult film for us. Uh, at the initial stages, we, it was the first underwater film we've made, but it was inspired by when we made the penguin film. We had a penguin cam which could go underwater and it was quite extraordinary. The footage we were getting of rock hoppers as they came onto the Falkland Islands underwater as they arrived was incredible and it was caught by a spy creature. So we thought if we can do that, why don't we start seeing what we could do with a bigger subject, you know, a totally underwater subject, which was dolphins. But for that, the challenge was then we have to make a whole array of new spy creatures, all with different roles, to film these animals. There was no one spy creature that could do everything. 
You know, we could have spy creatures which could have to move fast. We had to one, have ones which could sit around and wait, such as a turtle who, you know, could put his head above and below the water and film from both. Or we had tuna cam which could, you know, ride alongside spinner dolphins, filming megapods, being actually in the megapod. It, there was a whole series of development which took a huge amount of time and um, a lot of, you know, R&D you know, to, to get every spy creature working. But in the end, you know, we then were able to make this film, which I'm immensely proud because it contains more behavior on dolphins than you've ever, ever seen. I mean, it was quite extraordinary. Even for us, when at the beginning, we didn't even know what we were gonna do. But that's so often the case when we're filming. You know, we have to go with the subject and then work with the behavior and, and everything comes from that.